We now turn to the next example, which uh, is given here. Uh, the pressure at the entrance of a transistor turbine runner is 238.6 kPa. The shaft turns at 210 RPM. At the exit, the flow leaves without swirl. The inlet radius is R1 equal to 910 millimeters, and the exit radius is R2 equal to 760 millimeters. The relative velocity entering the runner is C1 equal to 10.2 meter per second, and the flow angle of the relative velocity leaving the runner is beta 2 equal to minus 72 degrees. The blade height is constant at B equal to 0 0.6 meters. Find the power delivered by the turbine and the pressure at the exit. At the exit, the uh, blade speed may be calculated uh, from the uh, rotational speed and uh, outlet radius as uh, U2 equal to 2 pi n R2 divided by 60 equal to 16.7 meter per second. Since um, V theta 2 equal to uh, zero, we may evaluate the um, radial velocity at exit PR2 equal to V2 equal to U2 divided by tangent of beta 2 uh, as 5.43 meter per second. Uh, from mass conservation across the uh, exit and inlet of the rotor, we may evaluate VR1 uh, like this, which then gives VR1 as 4.54 meter per second. And this is the same as CR1. Now, uh, at the inlet, the blade speed may be calculated as uh, 20 meter per second. Uh, from the inlet velocity triangle, C1 cosine beta 1 is equal to CR1. So if you look at the <coughs> inlet velocity triangle, C1 cosine beta 1 is equal to CR1. So this is CR1. So we can evaluate beta 1 as um, uh, arc cosine uh, CR1 divided by C1, which gives us two possible answers, plus minus 63.5 degrees. So now we have to decide uh, which one of these values uh, we can use or which one of these values actually is physically realistic. Let us go ahead with you both the values and uh, we will make this decision at a later point. So we can obtain, um, depending upon the angle that we use, uh, V theta 1 as U1 plus or minus C1 sine beta 1, uh, which after substituting the known values gives uh, 29.13 meter per second or 10.87 meter per second for uh, V theta 1. And consequently, if we evaluate alpha 1 as arc tangent of V theta 1 over VR1, we get uh, alpha 1 to be 81.14 degrees or 67.33 degrees. Now, 81.14 um, as can be seen is uh, too uh, extreme. So let us take a look at uh, the velocity triangle one more time. So an angle of alpha one, uh, an angle of 81.14 for alpha one, so you can see will make this uh, absolute velocity vector almost um, uh, parallel to the U, uh, U1 or blade speed uh, direction. And so it would appear as if the uh, absolute velocity vector uh, is uh, is parallel to the tangent at this uh, to the circle at this point, and so the flow seems to be entering the rotor almost tangentially. So contrary to the previous example, here when we say tangentially, we mean the absolute velocity entering the rotor tangential to the circle. Whereas in the previous example, when we said the the guide vanes allow the water to en enter the rotor tangentially. What we meant was the guide vanes adjust C1 so that C1 is tangential to the uh, blade tangent at entry, which is how it should be for ideal entry without any shock losses. Whereas in this case, uh, an alpha of 81.14 makes uh, V1 almost parallel to U1, and that is uh, somewhat unrealistic. So we will discard this choice for uh, uh, for uh, for alpha, and we will uh, use the uh, negative uh, value for beta. So this uh, is obtained from the positive value for beta. So we will use the negative value for beta, which is minus six three point five. So notice that the inlet velocity triangle in this case appears to be different from the way we have drawn here. So alpha one is positive, whereas beta one is negative. So that means alpha one 
uh, is such that V1 is in the counterclockwise direction to the radial direction and beta 1 is negative which means C1 is going to be in the clockwise direction to the reference direction. So we need to keep that in mind when we do the calculations from here onwards. So we take beta 1 equal to minus 63.5 degrees. So the uh, absolute velocity at inlet may be evaluated using Pythagoras theorem like this and it comes out to be 11.78 meter per second. The volume flow rate at entry may also be calculated as we did earlier. It is a 2 pi r1 times the height of the uh, rotor times the radial velocity at inlet, which gives us 15.575 meter cube per second. Hence, the power generated, that is the hydraulic power, assuming no losses, is equal to rho times q times v theta 1 times u1, which gives us 3386 kilowatts. Now, if we apply SFEE across the rotor and take into account the fact that uh, uh, water is an incompressible fluid, and we also assume that the flow is isothermal, that there is no change in internal energy, then we end up with an expression that uh, looks like this. And if you substitute the known values on the right hand side, we get P2 minus P1 over rho as uh, minus 162.76 from which with the, using the given uh, value for uh, P1, we may evaluate P2 as 75.84 kilopascal. So we can see that the pressure does indeed decrease from inlet to the exit of the rotor. So this completes this for the example. The uh, layout of uh, Francis turbine is uh, shown in this, uh, in this illustration, which is reproduced from the fluid mechanics textbook by uh, Fox, McDonald, and Pritchard. Um, uh, in fact, any uh, reaction machine, whether it is Francis turbine or the Kaplan turbine that we are going to uh, discuss next, uh, uses uh, uh, an almost identical layout. The uh, turbine uh, is a, a vertical axis turbine in these cases. Uh, water from the dam or a reservoir at a higher elevation is uh, brought uh, through a penstock uh, to the turbine runner. Uh, the fluid passes through the scroll casing and then the runner and then exits uh, into a reservoir downstream, which is usually called a tail race. Now, the draft tube, which is uh, shown here, is a, uh, it's a, a diverging passage that is used to increase the effective head in such reaction turbine installations. Let us see how this is accomplished. Now, when the draft tube is absent, uh, notice that the uh, free surface of the tail race would be in line with the exit of the runner. So the effective head on the turbine would then be the difference in elevation between the free surface of the water in the reservoir and the free surface of the water in the tail ray. So that would be the effective head. In other words, this would be the effective head uh, in the absence of a draft tube. The presence of the draft tube allows the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the effective head to be increased in the following manner. Uh, since it's a, a diverging passage, the uh, velocity or kinetic energy of the fluid that leaves the runner can be converted into a pressure head here. And um, uh, the tail race in this case has to be lowered from the level that it was at before. Okay. Now notice that since the uh, free surface of the tail race is at atmospheric pressure, by Pascal's law, a uh, point here would also be at uh, atmospheric pressure, which then implies that the pressure at the exit of the runner is less than atmospheric. So the effective head acting on the uh, runner would then be uh, this height plus an additional height, which is the length of the draft tube. Now. So the effective head is increased by uh, pretty much the length of the draft tube in this case. Okay. So this increases the power since the power is uh, proportional to the effective head that acts on the runner. Uh, but the disadvantage uh, or a downside uh, to having the draft tube is that since the pressure at the exit of the runner is uh, more negative, there is a likelihood that uh, cavitation may occur at the uh, exit of the uh, runner. So this has to be taken into account when designing the draft tube. 
Plus, since the draft tube is a diverging passage, there is also a danger of a flow separation in this diverging passage. So this also has to be uh, taken into account while designing the draft tube. This uh, completes our discussion of uh, uh, Francis turbine.